Ha, 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 ha. Miles Headlock here with a fresh supply of glue gossip for you. And if you'd like to know how I find these frank facts from these fighting female fans, uh, pardon me, my vocabulary just was stuck on the letter F. Anyway, I just use fun as my main frame of reference. Ha, 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 ha. Item, Palestina went on a date the other night and said she was so quiet and well-behaved that you could almost hear a pin drop. Of course, the date was at the bowling alley. Ha, 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 ha. And, and speaking of well-behaved ladies, with me today is Susie Spirit. Welcome, Susie. Thank you, Sir Miles. I understand you have a special surprise for us today. That's right. Starting today, we'll be sharing highlights and special moments from the Glow Games of Summer. And I want to say to all my fans that you may see me with my arm in a sling. But don't worry. The sling was for therapy after the operation that saved my arm. Do you remember when you knew you had a future in wrestling? Do I? That's a date I'll never forget. You remember the exact day? Not a day. It was a night. Prom night. My date pinned me, and I knew I was in love. Pinned you? On the mat? No. On the lapel. With his fraternity pin. Oh. <laughs> and now, from the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, another thrilling action-packed hour of GLOW! Today's show, Amy, the farmer's daughter, versus Mana, the headhunter. Little Fiji and Little Egypt take on Matilda the Hun. Then the California doll squares off against the terrorist, Palestina. And Mount Fiji fights Akashé and Angel. Mountain Fiji, the Riviera Hotel called and asked if you'd do them a favor. They want you to stay away from the buffet for a few days. Well, they started an all-you-can-eat for a $1.95 promotion, and they're afraid you'll break them. <laughs> and glow. Aunt Kitty's made a few names for her as well. What's that you have there, Amy? I got my magic chicken foot. How y'all doing? Woo! 
You got a chicken foot. Hold that up. Who gave you that? Your mama? No, my sister Sally said I might need it to ward off evil spirits. Back home, we got deer hunters and bear hunters, but head hunters? Uh-uh. No head hunters at home. Amy the farmer's daughter. Did you see that voodoo doll of Mana? It looks just like Amy. I heard the farmer's daughter was a living doll, but I think Mana's carrying things a bit too far. So this is what Aunt Kitty meant when she said Mana has pins that can defeat anyone. She takes Amy down right away. Ooh, is that a scary look on her face? Mana keeps reverting to the mentality of jungle warfare because in the jungle, she is the queen. Maybe this scissors will cut Mana back down to size. Ooh, Mana nails Amy to the mat with that last hammer blow. Mana's philosophy is simple. Hunt to live and live to hunt. To her, people are just another kind of animal. I wonder what category of animal Matilda the Hun would fit in. Whichever it was, it better be a really big one or else Matilda won't fit into it at all. The crowd is really shouting for Amy. She has a lot of fans out there. They don't like to see their little girl treated like this. Headhunter's gonna have a few enemies after this match. Amy seems to really be feeling that last blow. Here's something I bet Mana didn't expect. Amy's becoming the aggressor. You can bet Mana will pick up on this challenge. Wow, Amy totally faked out Mana. I guess she's never hunted this type of fighter before. Burns me up. What does? Seeing young women hanging out at the corner. Oh, Sir Miles. Amy's got some of that courage back now. She's ready to make quite a match out of this. She throws Mon into the corner. All right. Well, look how that Mana tried to slip out of that hole. But Amy's got her now. Amy's hitting something up. And Amy flips Mana. She's got her in a headlock. And over again. She's not going to let go of that grip. She's fighting her with her own medicine, going right for the head, just like Mana would. Oh, no, look out! Mana's got her stick back in the ring again, and she's going after Amy with it. And Amy dodges the stick. Amy's managed to dodge, it, dodge the stick so far. She's got that lucky chicken's foot out. I say that Amy has pretty legs, but she's got pigeon toes. <laughs> Did you see that? That was the quickest reflex I've ever seen. Mana should hire Amy as her chauffeur, after the way she's been driving Mana's head into the mat. One tough character. 
after her. Look how she takes down Amy. Well, it appears Mana has gotten her stick again. Ooh, Mana hits Amy with a stick. And this time it looks like she's going for the leg instead of the arm. Oh, what a blow to the knee. Now she's biting her calf. The referee should do something about this. And Hunter goes after the referee. Maybe she thinks those strikes mean he's a zebra. She's got him pinned in the corner and isn't going to let up on him. And down he goes. And now she's going back after Amy. Mana better be careful. She may have bitten off more than even she could chew. Ooh, the headhunter applies a totally illegal choke and continues to choke Amy on the rope. If the headhunter continues, she'll be disqualified. Oh my goodness, the referee can't stop Mana's choke of Amy. She's just too dangerous to let in the ring anymore. The security is going to have to take her out. Amy, she's gasping for breath the now. The winner of the match by disqualification, Amy, the farmer's daughter. Hi, I'm Simon, Santa's chief elf. Call Santa at 1-900-660-6666 and he'll tell you a different Christmas story every day. You'll find out how to get a whoopee from Santa's Christmas collection. And part of the cost of your call goes to Special Olympics. So call Santa at 1-900-660-6666. But each two-minute call costs $1.85, so get your parents' permission first. Okay, Simon, we're off to our next stop. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Sega challenges you with the ultimate video game, the Sega Master System, with twice as much memory oh, as any other video game. Advanced video technology like scrolling backgrounds, graphics in 64 colors, digital sound, and light phasers. And you can add to the excitement with sports pads, control sticks, and the first video games ever in 3D. Sega's the one. The Sega Master System. The challenge will always be there. This is your invitation to worship with us each Sunday at Evangel Church in the heart of Gulf Breeze. Please join us and become part of our growing family. My name is Bill Haven. I guarantee to sell you any car that I have at wholesale or under. If I don't have the car you want, I'll get it for you. We really want your business. Every car has a complete service before the sale. Every car has a lifetime warranty. Ask the man that owns one. We know you'll be satisfied. What is the Wilton North Report? Um, it's speaking to America's experts on foreign policy. Iran is a militant theocracy. I favor firm action. I like the Star Wars uh, defense. We can't just play isolationist politics. And that's just part of the Wilton North Report, premiering November 30th. from Alexander Egypt, Little Egypt. Little Egypt comes from a beautiful land of mysteries, and this is also the secret of her wrestling success. But she won't have a chance to see home again unless she and Little Fiji coordinate their efforts to beat Matilda the Hun. Her partner from Samoa, Little Fiji. This is the second time little Fiji has faced Matilda. During her first match against the German giant, she and Amy, the farmer's daughter, almost beat Matilda. 
I hope she learned something from that match that will help her win Their today. opponent in this handicap match from East Germany at over 280 pounds, Matilda the Hunt. Whoa, that's a lot of weight on those bones. Of course. Well, just assuming that there are bones there. I mean, it's been long since anyone has seen her bones. Just gives me a hug. He agrees with me all the time, as you should do, you swine! <laughs> Matilda makes her fox Fritzy so comfortable. How can she have so much love for a little dead animal and still hate people so much? By Ed Kitty! Aunt Kitty loves Matilda because she feels small next to her. grabs the ring announcer, David McLean, and forces him to kiss her Fritzy. How degrading. Maybe, but it's better than having to kiss Matilda. Matilda is placing Fritzy on the turnbuckle to keep him out of harm's way. Little Fiji has to remember how much trouble that little fox got her into. The referee is warning Matilda about the illegal use of the whip. I don't know what good that's going to do. That whip is like a part of Matilda. She'll never let go of it. Well, I don't believe it. Matilda has put her whip down. And now the other girls can enter the ring. I promise not to hurt you. Because you're too little. And you're not to be my slave. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, no. It's a trick to get the two girls to fight her. Matilda is getting her whip. The referee wants Matilda to give up the whip. But she's going to do what she wants to do to who she wants to do it. He's been kicked out over the top rope. A double drop kick, but they're not effective enough on Matilda. Now they're trying to put a dent in Matilda with their headbutt. Yeah, I'd be afraid to put my head in all that belly. It might get stuck in her fat and never come out. Matilda lifts little Fiji and down she goes. That's a high fall to get dropped from. Now the German gives her a big splash and little Egypt jumps on top. And the hun feels like she's got a fly on her back. She's standing up with her on there. Little Egypt's got a good grip on Matilda's nose. Matilda shakes her off. Whoops! If Little Egypt can keep up that kind of speed, she may have a chance of confusing M Matilda and winning the match. Egypt runs to get out of the way. And down she goes. She trips over little Fiji. But that's understandable. After all, she hasn't seen her feet in years. Little Fiji's being hunted down, and now Matilda's hitting her, choking her, doing whatever she wants. Oh no, Matilda's putting all her weight on one foot, and that one foot is on top of little Fiji. She turns her attention to little Egypt. Great flying, but Matilda has caught her like a fly in the air. I'm afraid Little Egypt should have gotten permission to fly from Matilda's airspace first because now she's going to be grounded. This looks like the first German hair lift in ages. <laughs> Little 
Fiji's trying to get her off of little Egypt. Now look at Matilda. She's palming both their heads like basketballs. At this moment, I'd say she has more brains in her hands than in her head. When Matilda gets going, there's no stopping her. Listen to that crowd. They hate Matilda. But that's okay with her because she hates them right back. You know, Sir Miles, I think sometimes that if we all showed Matilda some love and kindness, she'd become a nice person. You've got to be kidding. Uh-oh. Matilda is setting something up here. There's only one reason to lay these two girls side by side next to each other. And that's... Oh, no! She's climbing up onto the lowest rope, getting ready for the final countdown, and splash! The two girls roll out of the way just in the nick of time. And now Matilda is laying there almost unconscious from the shock of all that weight. And what do you know? Little Egypt and little PG just happen to have a net on hand to assist this beach whale. Egypt grabs Matilda's whip, and she looks like she intends to use it. Now both girls stand on their catch to celebrate. Now that they've got her trapped in the net, little Fiji and little Egypt say, let's have some fun. And they're throwing little Fitzy. I think this looks like a game of cat and mouse. Whoops, the cat is back, so the mice better scratch. Not before a good game of monkey in the middle. I have a feeling when this is over, fur will fly, and I don't mean Fritz's. Now Matilda's got her Fritzy back. She's handling both of her opponents without too much effort. Kitty for safekeeping. Grabs the Legion. Ooh, smack right on the head. Now Matilda's taking both Little Egypt and Little Fiji to the center of the ring. And she's giving them the big squeeze as hard as she can. And believe me, Sir Miles, Matilda the Hun knows a lot about squeezing. What makes you say that, Susie? Have you ever seen her in a pair of jeans before? I looked on the designer label on her jeans, and they read, Wide Load. <laughs> Tell me, Susie, why is Matilda standing there and shaking the girls like that? Come on, Sir Miles. Are you telling me you don't know that Matilda is a physical fitness freak? She is. Sure. In terms of having a good body, Matilda is a freak. <laughs> Matilda's not going to be happy till she totally embarrassed Little Egypt and Little Fiji for what they did to her. I'm afraid that Matilda is becoming overly sensitive about her weight. I find it hard to believe that she could be sensitive about anything. Oh, I know she's very out of shape, but underneath all that blubber beats the heart of a hippo. <laughs> Oh my, Little Egypt is certainly taking a beating. Well, she knew she'd have a tough fight when she got into the ring. Yes, I know. Just trying to fit in there with Matilda is a real challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine being underneath all that weight? I'm afraid she wants to grind her into sand. Matilda really wants Little Egypt out of action. I think she's got a plan for both of them, but I don't think I want to know. Now Matilda's got little Fiji. You know her sister's out there watching somewhere. So remember, whatever Matilda does here, she'll have to answer sometime in the future to big Fiji. But right now, little Fiji is on her own. It looks like Matilda is setting these girls up for a double pin. This is what makes Matilda the cruelest wrestler in glow, for her mental torture is as important as physical punishment. And there's the big crush. Little Fiji and Little Egypt are caught under Matilda's avalanche. Now isn't this ridiculous? Why doesn't she just finish the match? I'll tell you why. Because this is Matilda's idea of a good time. 
Look at her standing there. Poor Fiji and little Egypt. Can you imagine what pain they're going through? All for Matilda's entertainment. Well, it looks like she's had enough. I tell you, Sir Miles, I can hardly wait till the next loser leaves glow match. The winner of the handicap is Matilda the Hun. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Spanish Red is always complaining about her injuries. Do you think tape would help? Sure. I'll put some right over her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that Susie spirit is too sweet. I know. Palestina Cutter and Syrup came out. <laughs> Waitress! Yeah, what do you want? How do you make Long Island duck? Fire a warning shot. <laughs> Matilda says she has a heavenly body. Sure. She's built like a small planet. <laughs> do, 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 do. Points to ponder. If Ninochka was in a hurry, would she be Russian? <laughs> Why do divers go so deep? I just can't fathom it. <laughs> if a tree reformed, would it turn over a new leaf? <laughs> do, 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 do. Hi, gal. Tina Ferrari here with another tip on how to get the man you want. A lot of people are afraid to show their emotions when they start going together. A good relationship is a lot of give and take. How can you expect your partner to know your feelings when you've been hiding them? So come on, open up, get to know each other. There's a lot of things to share. Welcome to the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, for the first annual Riviera Glow Games. Hello, fans. I'm your host, David McLean, and I'm here with the beautiful Susie Spirit. Susie, unfortunately, that right arm's keeping you out of the events, but I hope that left arm is with that microphone and ready to help me out today. It sure is, David. I'm sorry to not be able to compete, but I'm happy to be here with you to help announce them. We're going to turn this Riviera Hotel upside down. We're going to take the roof off the hotel, and we're going to turn it into a battlefield you won't want to miss. Today, we have the tug of war, 11 members on each side, and the losers go into the mud. We're here in front of the Star Plaza of the Riviera Hotel preparing for the tug of war competition. As you can see in front of me, the losers are going right into this tub of mud that they're preparing right now. On my left, the good gals, Saloon Sweethearts, and on my right, Kitty's Killers. Susie Spirit, will you go ahead and explain the event? Well, David, the tug of war begins with 11 team members on each side. The two front linemen are posed at the edge of the mud. At the sound of the gun, the tug of war begins, and it continues until one front lineman is pulled into the mud. This marks a victory for the opposite side. This event is worth 25 points. Kitty's killers weigh in at 1,533 pounds. And the line person for Aunt Kitty's killers is attache. The lone sweethearts are weighing in today at a total of 1,527 pounds. The lineman for the good gal, Stallone sweetheart, is Little Fiji. We're ready to go at the sounding of the gun. Frank Diamato is going to start the event. When that gun goes off, the event will start. Here we go, fans. You can see it. On the good gal side, you have Mount Fiji as the anchor. The bad girls have Matilda the Hunt. Attache is using her feet. She's using her feet for leverage. Is that fair? That's fair. Is that fair, Sam? Is that fair? Sam? 
coming off with me. Now you'll what notice Barbara Hayes' little feet, she's not using her feet as much as that test shit. No, that's true, she's not. Oh, they have to stay on the red carpet. Mark Sturbins is known as Olympia, the powerhouse from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's pulling hard and strong. The tub is almost moving at the strength and the force that these girls are pulling. Palestina grinning and Kitty giving them encouragement. So far, it looks like an even stand. Sam, have you ever seen anything like this before at the Rivier? Little Fiji's going in. Little Fiji's in the mud. That's the end of the bout. The winner of the first event and the 25 points. Get these killers. They're going to have to break this up. From Damascus, Syria. Managed by Aunt Kitty, the terrorist, Palestina! Palestina just got back from a vacation she took back to her homeland. She said she hasn't had so much fun in a long time. Apparently, she and her friends sat around a bonfire singing anti-American songs. Ah, yes, the crackling logs on a fire. Oh, no, Sir Miles. They were burning books and a flag. Oh! I meant I was aiming for high cross. This time I will not miss. Your opponent, Palestina. She died today, McLean. From Malibu, California, Pan, the California Dog. You know, I'm really interested in finding out who undoes her hair. Palestina thinks she's bitching. I'll beat her into submission. The bad girls will be lost and lonely because this ring for locals only. I guess Palestina wants to start redecorating. She's starting with the rugs and working her way up. Now Doll is helping Palestina kick her bad habits. And she sends Palestina over the top rope and onto the floor. I say she fell more quickly than an embassy in her homeland. It looks like this match never even had a chance to a proper start. And now both girls are going at it outside the ring. He better be careful or they'll both be counted out. Ooh, what a nasty kick by Palestina. Yes, she learned to do that in boot camp. Palestina's grabbed the velvet cordon from in front of the crowd. Ooh, she's choking the doll with it now. And she's dragging her around like some sort of game. Only Cat's Cradle never looked like this. I wish Palestina had grown up here in America. Then maybe she'd be jumping rope instead of tightening it around someone's neck. by the California doll, but she's really angry. I've never seen her this way before. She kept waiting for Palestina to let up. Oh no, now the California doll is choking Palestina just like she was choked. This isn't like her at all. She's not even concerned about getting back inside the ring. Doll is just getting back at Palestina, that's all. You don't understand, Sir Miles. The doll would never go against the rules just to get even. That's not winning. Oh, Palestina isn't holding anything back either. She's punching the doll like her last name was Everlast. That Palestina is really pulling every trick in the book. I think she wants to sandbag the doll. Oh, right in the eyes of the California doll. Palestina has used that trick before, but never so meanly. She's
she's taking advantage of the doll who can't see a thing with that sand in her eyes. Palestina seems to want to make a wallflower out of the California doll. When your opponent starts breaking the rules like Palestina does, the only thing to do is fight fire with fire. Oh, it looks like the California doll has had all she can take. I don't believe it. The doll is throwing sand back at Palestina. The California doll is on an absolute rampage. This is the first time I've ever seen a beach bunny turn into a lioness. California doll seems a little out of control. A little out of control? She's forgetting that this is a wrestling match. She's gone to Palestina's level. Look at that. Palestina is biting her like a dog. I guess she was hungry for a good match. Well, that says it. They're both disqualified. Doll lost her temper, and now she's lost the chance to beat Palestina. Get your seat the referee. <laughs> both wrestlers have been counted out. Palestina to a pulp. This isn't the California doll I know. She's snapped under the pressure of Palestina's dirty tactics. Get Palestina back in, Kitty. Fans, both wrestlers have been counted outside the ring. Both wrestlers counted outside the ring. Double count out. We'll be back in a moment with more of Glow C2. Hello, Vladimir. What do you have to report? You have found a woman with an endless supply of information on everything how can we get her to work for us? By writing her a letter. What is this woman's name? Dear Abby, leave it up, Vladimir, and I will find you a new job in show business as a road manager for the flea circus. <laughs> this is a handicap feature match. Accompanied by her sister, Little at over 350 pounds, Mountain Fiji! Yay, Mount Fiji! Pineapple pizza is oh so yummy, that's what I love in my tummy. Shells are pretty, and I love pearls, nothing but the best for this glow girl. Yeah. <laughs> First, from Oakland, California, Angel! They say Angel was thrown out of high school for riding her motorcycle down the hall and doing wheelies in study hall. leave little Fiji alone. I guess she knows she doesn't stand a chance against Big Fiji. Wow, what a move! Double flying drop kicks. And that seems to have stunned Mount Fiji. While well, Attache and Angel go right after little Fiji. They want to take every chance they can get. Now it's your turn, Attaché. I knew you'd 
for saying that. Wow, head first, right into the cement. She's got to be dazed by that one. Attaché's grabbing that helmet. I hope she's not going to use it. She's delivering a chain letter for Mount Fiji. <laughs> oh, now Mount Fiji can't even fight back. She's got her arms tied in that chain. We've seen the referee warn them about the helmet before, but attaché and Angel don't care about the rules. Angel and Attaché are out to hurt little Fiji, while Mount Fiji is a prisoner in Angel's chain. Mount Fiji bumps Attaché. Now she's crushing her in the corner. Angel has her helmet on again. No wonder they didn't want her in study hall. wherever she goes. It appears they want to stick it to Mount Fiji. Ooh. Wow! Mount Fiji has exploded from the chain. I bet Atesha and Angel didn't count on this happening. The crowd is feeling Fiji mania. Makes Attaché really mad. Oops, Attaché and Angel are back to the old pass and pummel routine. Down she goes! These two haven't learned by now. You shouldn't start climbing the mountain unless you're ready to come all the way down. And that backdrop was just the thing they needed to show them. at Mount Fiji. The first thing she wants to do is go and save her little sister. What a wonderful thing to do after the beating she's taken from that cache and Angel. And they still won't leave her alone. You see, Sir Miles, there she goes, back to help her little sister before she goes to finish off the enemy. That's always been her number one priority. What a bond those two have between each other. Well, now that she's sure little Fiji's okay, I bet she's got something cooked up for these two. Now they're throwing anything they can at Mount Fiji. are trying to really chip away at the mountain. Well, they'd better be careful. The mountain may fall on them. Down goes Attaché. Oh, she's taking out the garbage. <laughs> and in comes little Fiji. She wants in on some of this fun. And now Fiji helps her little sister to make the big splash and the pin. That's what I call really putting your foot down, Mount Fiji. For the hottest moves in town, dial 1-900-660-GALS for GLOW, those gorgeous ladies of wrestling. $1.50 the first minute, $0.35 cents each additional minute.
Bald and Fiji needs only one thing to be complete. I know. Good year written across her side. <laughs> Coming up next on Mr. President, the First Lady shakes up the White House, the President, and the nation when she walks out. Followed at 7.30 by more problems at the White House. Then at 8, it's the new adventures of Beans Baxter and Second Chance at 8.30. That's all tonight from Fox, here on TV 15. Oh. What is it, Aunt Kitty? David, if you don't date Hollywood, you're going to drive me to an early grave. Good. I'll get my car. Oh, you <laughs>